Let's start talking first of all about news that broke this week that the Jamaican cabinet has approved the legislation that would make it legal to possess a small amount of marijuana, or at least that would decriminalise the possession of a small amount of marijuana for personal use. Let's get that clear. They're not legalising cannabis. They are decriminalising the use of cannabis if it's passed um, for personal use. Now, though long used by the island's Rastafari community and celebrated in Jamaican music, reggae, the drug has been banned in the country for more than a century. Well, joining us now is Abka Fitzhenley, who's a journalist for the Nationwide News Network in Jamaica. And just to get that point clear, Abka, am I right when I say that the government is only proposing to decriminalise, not to legalise, uh, cannabis of any amount? Absolutely, you are correct. But first, let me say hello to my people in the United Kingdom, also to my people who are tuned in in Jamaica and across the Caribbean. You are absolutely right. The government of Jamaica, they have proposed to not legalize ganja, but to decriminalize the substance. Why have they? Why did they take this step? Why have they decided to decriminalize it? Because there's a sentiment in Jamaica that decriminalizing use of ganja or marijuana as it's called could be of a lot of economic benefit to Jamaica. So that I sense is among the primary reasons why because marijuana, medical marijuana is a booming business worldwide. Here we are told it's a multi-billion dollar industry. And it is widely felt that Jamaican marijuana or Jamaican ganja is regarded as among the best in the world. So the thinking among the administration here, the political directorate, is why is it that there are sections of the United States of America, I believe Uruguay, they have done it, why is it that we have the best resources, raw material as it were, and we're not utilizing it to the benefit of the wider populace in Jamaica and the Jamaican economy, which is not doing so well. That's what the Rasta man's been telling them for generations now, and especially my own mentor, Peter Tosh, as well. But the government never listened. What, what has changed their mind? You say the financial benefit, but is there no opposition to the government's decision there? It has generally been well received. I tell you what. There's one MP on the government side called Dayton Campbell, a member of parliament. He's a medical doctor as well, so he voiced his views against it. And, of course, he's coming from a medical perspective, the potential damage or the potential negative impact on the health of persons who who smoke marijuana, Mm. who smoke at all. There are a few persons from the medical profession and also from the church community who have expressed opposition to it. But the general sentiment among the wider populace is very welcome. The opposition here, they have indicated that their full support for the bill tabled in Parliament by the Justice Minister Mark Golding on Friday, which proposes to A, decriminalize, not have persons who found in possession of marijuana have a criminal record. They won't have to go to court. And if, in fact, they are found in a public place with more than two ounces, they will have really to pay a fine or yeah. a ticket, as it were. And that, that's part of the reason, isn't it? Because I was speaking to Dr. Caroline Cooper from the University of West Indies the other day, and she was saying that, well, it's been clogging up the legal system, the justice system, that so many young men and women are um, waiting to be sentenced for possession of uh, and consummation of some marijuana, which, she would argue, goes to the very culture of Jamaica. I'll take your point about... The smoking of marijuana, or the smoking of anything, I think it's fair to say, is not healthy for you. But there are people, and law-abiding people in Jamaica, who for many, many years have been using some cannabis in uh, for health remedies and mixing it in tea and so on. That They've been doing that, and that's almost ingrained in the culture, isn't it? For a very, very long time. I just make reference to a point you may just know regarding the impact on the future of many of our young people. When you go to the corporate era criminal court or the courts around the country, the first cases that come up are the ganja cases. So you'll have 
hundreds of young men being sentenced and you're fined 1,000 Jamaican dollars, that's just for six pounds. And you have a criminal record. You can't travel and it affects your possible, your ability to get employment. So that also is among the reasons why the government of the they have indicated why they are essentially decriminalizing it because it's blighting the future of many young persons in Jamaica, young and old, middle-aged, that sort of thing. Regarding ganja being ingrained in our culture, where, where are we coming from? We are coming from, you said earlier in your introduction, almost a century of it being illegal. Take, for example, in 1972, Bob Marley, who... Jamaica is well known for. He was he spent approximately four weeks in prison because he was found in possession of a ganja cigar, basically. Bonnie Whaler of the Whalers. Peter Tosh was beaten and spent over a year in prison because of possession of marijuana. So it's not only now that it's being decriminalized, it's not only the Rastafarian community who is happy, but also the wider Jamaica. I, I sense I sense in the populace, just Rastafarians who use marijuana, but there's a sense of relief and a sentiment that's basically saying long in coming. Yeah, well, they've been battering down sentence, as you've been describing it, for such a long time. And it's the great Peter Tosh saying, me, nah, go to jail for ganja no more. And we could have even added two to the Maytals there, 54, well, 46. Well, Peter Tosh, who said legalize it back in the 90s. Of course. So of Vice course. Cartel, who said, of course. not going to jail, nah, stop smoke my ganja, which is an, essentially translates to, I will not desist from smoking marijuana. Yeah, yeah. I was it, saying... It's been ingrained in our musical culture from yeah. the 1970s way back oh we know oh we know trust me uh, great to speak to you uh, thanks very much i really appreciate that abka abka fitzhenry there journalist for the nationwide news network in, in jamaica